Hi, sorry. Can you hear me? Is the background visible from your side or my side? I hear a bell. You hear a noise, sir? Uh, there is a visible like uh, cooker, is it? No. Or is it? Or do no. you hear that? No. 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 Or is it that? Okay. Will you? What's wrong with? went wrong it seems uh he's asking us to check with the team whether ranil is added
hello everyone we are facing some technical challenges just give us like a minute or so we will be sorting this out
Hello. All right, everyone. Uh, sorry to join. I think there's some technical difficulty. Hope you can hear me OK. Pawan, you there? I can hear you, yeah. I think uh, you can't hear Pawan, sorry. Uh, I can hear you. Can you hear me? Ranit, can you hear me? Yeah, sure. So you can take right. over uh, power nuts to start with. OK, sure. Um, can you put it in the presentation mode? OK, thanks. Thanks, Daniel. Um, hopefully I'm audible. Yeah. Am I audible? Daniel? Oh, you are audible. You are fine. Can you hear okay. me? OK. Yeah, I can hear you. Sorry, I can hear you. OK, perfect. Um, so let me just uh, give a quick intro, Pavan, and then you can take over. Sure. Good afternoon, everyone. Apologies for the delay. We had a technical glitch. Um, Ranul, who's online, he couldn't share his screen, so it took us a while to do some alternate arrangements. All right, it's a pleasure to join you all back for our workshop on AppMesh. I hope you all had time for your lunch. You know, I just uh, finished mine, and within less than half an hour, you guys have joined back. So this is a continuation of our earlier session. So I shared very quickly the gaps on service, service mesh, and now we will show you in action how App Mesh works. So it will be an engaging session. We will take questions towards the end, but please do type in your questions in the chat window. Um, with that, let me pass it to Pawan. We'll keep rolling. OK. Thanks. Thanks, Uri. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Sorry for the technical glitch here. Yeah. So uh, today, uh, the agenda for this session would be mostly to look at what are the few challenges that we see in microservices and what would be our solution approach. And then later, uh, Ranil will walk you through a small demo of how this solution approach that we have come up with could really help you to solve those problems that we highlight in microservices based architecture, right? And then also towards the end, we will talk about business benefits of this solution approach that we have proposed. Yeah. So let me get started with a few of the gaps that we see in uh, microservices today, microservices based architecture today. Yeah. All right. Uh, so we next slide. Yeah. If you look at a uh, typical organization have data that will be made consumable by uh, applications that are being running in the organization. That means data are made consumable. Data are made consumable by applications that are running in an organization. And then these applications that we build over a period of time has been really rigid in nature. And we started calling them monolithics, monolithics, right? Monolithic based application, uh, monolithic applications, right? And then later we slowly move on to something as we call it as microservices based architecture to get that flexibility in the way we make the data consumable. And once we made that data consumable, one of the things that we saw was this data was of interest for our external entities as well, like the partners who are outside the organizational boundaries or the, even the apps that are running outside the organizational boundaries. This data was of interest for them. But one of the concerns this internal organization had was how do I expose that data that I have to external parties? So we wanted to secure that information, right? That, that it's being shared with partners and other entities outside the organization boundary. So we started uh, putting those concerns into our services itself. That means we started hardwiring those concerns into our services. And that made our microservices or the services that we used to build much more factor. To avoid this, what we did, we externalized it and put a proxy in between, which we call it as a API gateway, which actually addresses the concerns that we had around security when you expose data out of organizational boundaries. And this gateway that we put in between had addressed north-south traffic that flows in between organization and external entities. So this is something that we addressed. But when we specifically look at microservices architecture, right? Uh, sorry, next slide. When we look at microservices architecture itself as of today, to be of focus, because most organizations are now developing applications in microservices-based architecture, this Though at high level, we call it microservices-based architecture. They are miniature distributed architectures. 
That means there is a lot of traffic that flows in between services, right? Besides just the north-south traffic that we talked about earlier, even the services have a lot of communication that have, uh, there is, uh, they communicate a lot. And then this communication logic or the network, uh, uh, network related information itself gets coded into our services. That means for handling this traffic and then for handling all the requirements to uh, address this request that comes in from other service, which we address, which we call it as east-west traffic, yeah, that that happens inside the organization between the services. To handle those requests, each service will have to have some cross-cutting code that we have to, or sorry, boilerplate code that we'll have to write into our services, which makes our microservices a big, big fat microservice. So, sorry, next slide. So if you look at, uh, sorry, next slide. Uh, okay, so thanks. I can see the next slide now. Okay, so how did we address this now? That means we, our services were getting fatter to facilitate communication between services. Our services were getting fatter. What we did was uh, if we looked into what goes into those services, microservices. As you can see on the screen, there is a lot of coding around uh, tracing and also service discovery and then routing that actually got into our services, which made it fatter. To address this, we actually externalize these concerns out from the microservice itself into a proxy, just like we did with API gateways earlier. We now, what we did, we externalize them into a proxy and put that uh, boilerplate code into those proxies. So proxies were actually handling those concerns related to tracing, service discovery, routing, config, etc. So can you uh, hit and uh, can you go to the next one? Yeah, yeah. So now these concerns are now being addressed by the proxy here, right? And then once the proxies are in place, now the northwest and north, south and east-west traffic can uh, uh, flow smoothly. So we uh, hit next. As you can see in this animation, all these communications, north, south, and east-west, were facilitated smoothly. But when we grow our um, uh, services, that means when we grow in terms of number of services that we build, there are a few more service. Uh, we few, we have to address few more concerns. Let's look at. Let's look at few of the other concerns we will have just besides the network related concerns that we had. Sorry, next slide. Okay, and then this, this proxy that used to give us that uh, network context, we call it as uh, uh, service mesh. That means service mesh is one of the recommendations that we use for externalizing the network related uh, boilerplate codes that we had into a proxy. But besides that, there were a few other unaddressed un un concerns that we had uh, in our services. The still services weren't st uh, still micro yet. There is a lot of uh, so boilerplate code that got into uh, our services, which was making our services fat. If you look at a few of them, especially um, these microservices, they are aware, unaware of which application they are serving. For example, if I have a payment service, the payment service might be called by an app that is uh, bringing in new business or this same payment service might be addressing an app uh, or attending an app that is actually helping uh, service uh, center guys to buy or let uh, let them buy any spare parts. So they're not app aware as themselves. So to make them app aware and to respond according to, uh, respond, respond based on the app for which it is serving. So we had, to, we had to add an app context to it. That means it might have to do some data masking based on the uh, app it gets the request from or it might want to also have to do context-based routing, okay? Or it might want to recognize the user who is making the call. One of the use cases, like if you have two departments who are using, uh, and one of the departments wants to do a um, cross-charging based on number of API consumption, I should be able to distinguish that consumer, internal consumer with an external consumer. So how do you do that? How do you actually recognize user? So these are a few concerns that were actually once again stuffed into the services that made it a bit difficult for uh, services to be micro. So, uh, sorry, next slide. So what are we recommending here? What are we planning to look at, right? That means service mesh, as we saw earlier, had already a proxy that was addressing layer four concerns or network related concerns that we have. Now we are also talking about an app related proxy, which actually gives an app context to the service that is running uh, inside a pod. Maybe if you're containerizing it, if it is running inside a pod, there's another proxy that sits in between and gives an app context. And then it gives you information about consumer-based access and tracking. 
and also it gives you capabilities around uh, app application of sophisticated policies, right? All those policies that you can think of applying at a centralized API gateway level that can be applied at service level right now. And also it helps you monitor the traffic on application basis. And all of this can be centrally controlled by a control plane, which gives you visibility and also helps you to configure all these proxies and roll them out to specific services. So this is the architecture that we feel would be of something of interest for organizations who have been extensively using microservices. So to summarize this all, we are basically looking at three capabilities. Um, sorry, next slide. Yeah, so what we basically want is when we have uh, too many microservices that are running inside the organization and all of these eight, uh, services are being um, integrated using API-led integration, we want to make those services or APIs running inside the organizations to be application aware. They should have an application context. They know which applications they are serving and so that they can act accordingly. And also in a typical organization which has been using service mesh, API gate, API management and integration as three different technologies to address the different solutions. There should be a solution that brings convergence to all these solutions so that it gives uh, a better customer experience to customers who are working on it and then there'll be less uh, boilerplate codes that goes into our services. Uh, while doing all this, we should also make sure there's an easy configurable control plane, which can help you configure all these proxies that we talked about. It shouldn't be like you have multiple different consoles to do configurations. And then if you have worked with service mesh, you might have seen challenges around how complicated it is to configure policies and push them into those NY proxies. So there should be an easy way of configuring uh, policies in a, so a control plane and also monitor those proxies. Now with this, let me hand it over to Ranil and he'll walk you through how this um, solution that we have proposed can be brought into realization. Yeah, Ranil, over to you. Yeah, sorry, can you hear me okay? All right, okay. Yeah. So uh, as Pavan uh, explained uh, how how uh, we evolved to the microservice architecture from monolith so in order to increase the agility and flexibility and today we are started adapting service mesh to address the all the cross cutting concerns uh, Pavan mentioned right so so mainly in terms of how we can get the fault tolerance through the um, circuit, breaker, circuit breaker mechanism, increase the agility in the east-west traffic, and then enabling the auto discovery. All these functionalities are enabled through service mesh today. And also you can enforce some level of network enforcement to add the security or anything in the east-west traffic. But service mesh is definitely a great add-on to our microservice architecture to increase the east increase the agility as well as the um, availability across the east-west traffic. But it has its own limitations as well. Particularly, it often push a, push our developers to write the code to configure all these uh, enforcements or maybe um, to configure the circuit breaker me mechanism or anything like that. And on, in addition to it, it has some difficulty to add the app context or business context to our microservice architecture. So what I mean by app context here is that, okay, if we have a consumers uh, consuming my, all, all your microservices, it, it, the consumers could be the internal or external. So if you want to get a visibility um, across your consumers, what is the ac their, their invocation pattern? What, what is their, uh, um, the, the, how many transactions or how many invocations they're making at certain point of time at the consumer level, you won't be able to trace it. Some extent service mesh can capture the metrics using telemetric, but it won't give you the consumer view of uh, uh, analytics on top top of it and also it won't give the visibility at your payload la payload level or maybe a layer 7 level of enforcement is difficult to apply using service mesh where net service mesh has some functionality around uh, network enforcement. So that's where we at Software Edge, we worked along with the service mesh to add some additional capabilities uh, around business con adding business context or application context. So we work with our customers to give a solution using our app mesh technology in the API management platform. So we entirely simplified how we can manage the service mesh in our microservice architecture with a simple three steps. So you can configure service mesh 
in our our api management platform and do a easy introspect without any without any coding or anything you can just uh, um do a introspect easily and you can choose which microservices you want to add the app context to or maybe you you can add the some kind of a, the, the enforcement or policies around your microservices and inject that as a sidecar deployment without changing anything at your microservice level so that is actually gives the complete agility for your devops process or your agile methodology in our development so your developers can focus on their business logic development and then your ops users can bring in the infra changes or maybe ops changes that's where it simplifies the entire way how you can manage the service mesh in your microservice architecture so on top of the simplification we also adding the our our main api gateway capabilities also uh, on top of uh, service mesh functionality so you can as i said before you can inspect the you can add the layer 7 policies like you can um, look at the payload data and then you can apply the intelligent routing in your east west traffic or maybe you can apply the consumer logic consumer based uh, tracking using api keys and then get the visibility at the applications level so and also you can uh, reuse your existing service for both east west as well as the south north traffic so that's where we with the app mesh we are bringing in lot more capabilities on top of service mesh so some of these uh, capabilities and challenges i'm going to demonstrate today using our uh, our our api management platform and app mesh so bef- before that quickly uh, Uh, so this is my demo environment today i have uh, kubernetes as a cluster for all my microservices so um, and i containerize all my microservices using docker and then enable the uh, istio in my cluster as a service mesh technology and then i uh, api management as my app mesh console for managing the managing the my uh, service mesh and other layer 7 um layer 7 uh, the policies so so in terms of business challenges i'm picked up few use cases where which are relevant to the industry today so for example i have a product service which is mainly is kind of a lookup service in my organization so where it is consumed by both internal both internal consumers as well as external consumers which is not so which could be a not so traffic and internal consumer could be east west traffic so same service been reused for my both consumers so using envoy or maybe istio uh, it's difficult to get the consumer level metrics but that's a big challenge uh, so we can adjust to the app mesh technology here what we can do is that we can enable the application using the api configuration and inject that as a sidecar deployment to the into the microservice pod so that way it's very uh, simplifying the uh, how you can enforce application level policies so let me get into so let me just showcase uh, how this demo works so let me bring up my demo environment here so this is my um, kubernetes cluster i'm using rancher as my kubernetes cluster so here i have all these um, my microservices there and the api gateway also has hosted in the kubernetes cluster and um, which will be So this is our this is our web methods API management platform where you can easily uh, apply some level of policies using uh, uh, intuitive way of policy management. Later I'll be showing that how you easily you can configure all the policies and then inject that as a sidecar deployment. So today we are focusing on main app mesh functionality, how it can help us to um, uh, apply service uh, to, to, to manage your service mesh architecture. So I'm going to configure my service mesh repository here. So I'm going to give the cube configuration, which will point to my Kubernetes cluster. and on top of it i need to provide uh, my main api gateway details as well so since i'm using uh, api gateway within my cluster so i'm using my service endpoint um, url here and um, as i said earlier we are injecting um, 
all the api management policies as a sidecar micro sidecar deployment so i'll be using my micro gateway vanilla flavor to uh, add the policies so let me just so i'm starting this demo in with a clean slate so that you can see how easily you can introspect uh, all the microservices so i also need to provide my namespace where i want to uh, do an introspect uh, at the service mesh level and then save it so uh, as you see here so automatically api management will introspect all, all the services you have it in the service registry so in, in the in the istio here so for first use case I, I have a product microservice i want to add the visibility i want to add the application level consumption analytics so what i can do is that i can simply i can choose the microservice there and then with a few clicks i can convert this as a ap5 so so as soon as you click on ap5 it will create a uh, ap management configuration here as you see it will import all the definition and everything automatically and then so this is the main policy window where you can intuitively configure all the policies. So let me give you a quick overview here how easily you can uh, add the policies here. So as you see here, the mobile icon represents the incoming traffic and blue, re blue line represents the inbound uh, policies which you can apply at different stages. And then the traffic will route to your backend native service, which is, uh, which is microservice in our case. And then after the service response, and then your green line represents the response uh, level of policies you can apply at multiple stages yeah so for this use case what we are focusing is that how i can identify different consumers and then add the visibility at a uh, in a microservice level uh, at the different consumers so what i can do is that i can add the identification as my policy here so there i'm going to specify that okay i'm going to use my api key as an uh, identification parameter and then Next, at the next step, I'm going to register this API in my application. So applications could be my internal consumers, maybe uh, maybe external consumers like a partners or anything. So I'm going to add my applications to this API at the next step. So let me save this. And I can go to the application. I can enable the app level. So I pre-created my apps here for this demo. So I'm going to add all these consumer applications here. So I want to have a API key for my all, all consumers who are using through mobile app. I want to have a separate API key for my partner apps and as well as my internal application so that I can track, I can track the way the requests are coming from these different sources and then save it. So once you configure these policies and then what you can do is that you can next step, as a next step, you can just push these policies as a sidecar deployment. So with a simple click deploy, in the back end, what it does is that it will go and look at the pod and then it will inject the all the API configuration. As you see, it's injecting, it's unavailable now. It's in the back end, it's pulling my sidecar, my micro gateway, and then applying all the policies which I configured in the API management console. If you look at the logs, you can see that in the runtime, it established the connection to the, the main API gateway, and then it pulls all the configuration. That's where, that's where the, how the sidecar injection will happen now. So let me give you a quick illustration how it looks. Yeah. So how easily we provision this? Let me just show you here. Yeah. So in the beginning, we we all know we uh, we have a Kubernetes cluster, and where I have a issue as my service mesh uh, have. We are, so service mesh has a control plane, and data plane, and all. So we all know that. So what we are doing now is that we added the API gateway as a con uh, into the control plane, and our API gateway will do a easy introspect into the pilot component in our service mesh, and then it will pull all the as you see as it, as it, as we have also seen in the demo, AppMesh pulled all the microservices configuration. And there's a second step, using the Intuitive UI, we can configure all the policies 
at the application level. So that is where we are adding the app ca- uh, application context or business context to our microservices. And then after you apply the, the policies and all, as a third step, you can just simply provision that as a sidecar deployment and you can push that as a micro gateway. And that's a c- three simple steps. You can manage and enforce all the policies for your east-west traffic, even for this, uh, maybe in selective cases, you can also use that for your north-south traffic as well. So in the runtime, well, how it is going to happen as that, okay, you have a different consumers now. I have a consumer internal mobile users. I have a partners. I have an internal consumer. So, so three set of partners I have here, right? Three set of consumers I have here, right? So all these guys can invoke the service in the back using different API keys. So from the consumer point of view, there's no, it's not going to change anything. They can still invoke, invoke the services on the same endpoint URL. So what we did in the background is that we injected the micro gateway into the pod where all our policies are enforced and then it'll call the native microservice and then take the response back and then give it response back to your consumers. So that's where, um, that's where all the policies are enforced here. So let me just go here and then show you how it can be tracked on the gateway UI. Yes, sir. Okay, why, sir? Okay. Oh, all right, okay. So only the Chrome browser, right? Okay, okay, sure. So I'm using Postman as my consumers here. So what I've done is that, okay, so as I stated earlier, so I've created different applications here. So, and then each application will have their own API keys. So I'm going to take these API keys to do the invocation. It's not only add the uh, the invocation, uh, the identification. It also uses this API key to track all your invocation across different consumers. So I'm taking this as a partner app. I'm going to pass this same key here and then do a couple of invocation to generate some traffic. So for the internal consumers here, I'm going to use the internal app key and then do invocation. And for the same way, the consumers, mobile consumers as well, just do a couple of hits to generate some graphs in the background. Yeah. So if you look at this, so API gateway, so all these analytics and data will be pushed to the central uh, uh, API, API gateway where you'll be seeing all the rich analytics here. So it provides the rich analytics in terms of summarizing what API invocation happening, what is the trend across the APIs, and to be specific for this demo, we are looking at the consumer level invocation, right? So let's look at this, how we can track the, the invocation pattern for my microservice at the consumer level. Yeah, there you go. So this is a pattern. This is the invocation pattern across 12 hours. Last 12 hours, we can see the, the invocation pattern. And also you can capture the performance data of your native service. So, and also additionally, you can even add the audit logs and uh, other met other other audit other logging points as well. So that is how we can add the app business context to your microservices using uh, our uh, our uh, app mesh functionality. So not only this, so that visibility is a one one aspect of it. What if if we have some challenges around? Uh, there are some consumption is happening very highly from your mo- mo- uh, mobile consumers. You want to throttle it? How you can apply throttling? Of course, the service service mesh will has a the the rate limits and all, but it won't add the limits at the consumer level. It will add the limits at the at the microservice level. At, broad across all your consumers. So if you want to apply different policies at each consumer level, okay, I want to allow my 100 transactions per second for internal traffic, but I, I want to give more more rate, more, more limits for my external consumers like partners and mobile users, I want to give more limits. So you can control even your invocation rate limits and at the consumer level. That is what you can add on top of uh, service mesh. 
so that is the that is the one use case we can we we plan to demo and second one Second one is about um, you have a microservice which could be share, which will be, which will be uh, sharing some kind of sense to data in terms of payment info or maybe customer data or something like that, and uh, you and as, as an organization, okay, you have, you need to comply with some kind of regulations and recently regulation added some kind of a compliance to not to give share the sense to data in your microservice from your API calls, and how you can enforce. I mean, there's a one way. Where you can go and modify your microservice code to mask the data, and uh, that, but there there are some kind of infra level, ops level changes also you can enforce using without changing any code at the microservice level using uh, our API gateway policies. So what you can do is that again you can apply some kind of uh, policies at the main central API gateway, and then with the same mechanism you can inject those policies along with your main pod to enforce transform the data while you respond back to your consumers so that the data masking is another possible requirement where you where we can look at the payload and modify transform the payloads as well so that is a add on on top of service mesh where service mesh is good at uh, looking at the packet level where it cannot get into the Payload or maybe uh, content de data level transformations cannot be applied, and where we adding the uh, some kind of capabilities on top of our wish mesh to give that uh, flexibility there. So let me show you how quickly we can do it. So I have a payment service. Um, yeah, so I'm using a simple payload for this demo sake to uh, showcase. So this is a payment pay account number where. This could be a sense to data which I want. I don't want to share with uh, my con end users, uh, consumers. I want to mask this particular fields in my payload before responding back to my uh, channels. Yeah. So how this is the native? I'm directly hitting the native service using my pay, uh, the postman here, and uh, which is giving uh, the 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 raw response as it is. So again, I can go back to app mesh. So I can pick my microservice here, and then I can API like how I did earlier, and then uh, I can go back to that um, policies here. So it just introspect the definition, and you can even import um, even even uh, Swagger. You can even uh, update the definition using Swagger and all as well. So I pre con pre created the API definition for this demo. So this is again this is the policy window we just seen earlier. So where you can intuitively configure it. Configure all the policies. So for our this this scenario, I want to transform the data before responding back to my end user. So at the trans transformation level, I have multiple transformations I can apply. Like we can apply rich transformation using uh, XSLDs and JSON queries, and even I can uh, validate my response back, um, giving the res before before responding back as well. So for this case, I want to mask certain element, right? So I have a JSON response here. This is my query. This is my JSON path payment transaction and pay account number. So I'm going to take this path. And then I just add the criteria here. And then I just say masking. So in the runtime, this API policy is going to look for this particular JSON path and then apply transform that into the masked value. So just save it. And then you can, the same way you can just go and deploy. In the back end, the same kind of provisioning will happen, trigger. And then as you see here, it will pull the, yeah, it already pulled the information here and then created the sidecar deployment here. So, Again, here in the back end, you can see that uh, let me just switch to the my postman. Okay. Yeah, so 
As I said earlier, so from consumer point of view, as after you are playing the micro gateway, you don't have to change any endpoint or anything. You can they can still consume at the same endpoint, the back end. So as you see, this uh, the sense to data will be masked in the back end using the same policy we enforce. We added. Yeah. So that is a one one of the challenges we often see from the, with our customers, how we can easily apply different type of policies different types of uh, security enforcements we can do using uh, what, what you what are the rich enforcement you can do through the api management you can even leverage those rich capabilities and then push that as a micro gateway as a sidecar deployment so and another another challenge also we've seen with our customers is around um, how you can reuse your existing legacy applications it's quite often we see that um, we often lift and shift our legacy applications which are developed like uh, decade ago using soap standards and you want to lift and shift as it is with, because you want you don't want to refactor entire uh, service again so you can lift and shift and you can you can add a more you can modernize that as a rest json uh, service using uh, app mesh tech, app mesh functionality so what you can do is that again you can apply the transformation at the API management level, and then those transformation configuration, you can automatically push that as a, a layer on top of uh, uh, just not a layer as such, but yeah, as a sidecar deployment again, as a uh, to transform uh, the request and response before sending the so sending it to the native service and back to your consumers. So let's look at this use case: how into how easily we can configure, how you easily can um, transform this. So. Yeah, so I've already deployed my SOAP service. Yeah, this is my SOAP service, which is standard XML format responses uh, thrown back here. And um, and this is my payment SOAP service running in the cluster. And I can see same thing here. The screen is okay right uh, now, sorry. Yeah, better, 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 more legible. With whatever microservice we have, you can click API. Let's go back to our uh, uh, UI where we have the policies, have a policies to configure. So as I just said earlier, for this again, I want to transform this response here. So I want to, resp I want to transform the request and response before responding back to my uh, native service here. So I can add, this is a XSLD transformations to convert my XML message into JSON message, and then I can save it. And then you can go and deploy that. So same kind of provisioning will happen in the background. Sidecar will be injected in the runtime. And that will be pulled as well. So that's all. I think that's a configuration we could do. And then if you go and hit the same native endpoint, you will rest JSON. Oh, sorry, I think it must be starting up. This must be reinitializing the ingress controller. Yeah. Let me go and check. Yeah, it should be OK now. Yeah, there you go. So all this XML message automatically got converted as a JSON message in the back end. That's the main challenges. These are the these are the few challenges we we try to showcase using our app mesh today. But as I said earlier, yeah, so all the re API management level policies and enforcement said we can add at the application. Yeah, yeah, you can add that as a application level enforcements and then deploy as a sidecar deployment easily with uh, three simple steps. Yeah, so we've seen how it, it's been provisioned in three simple steps. And in the runtime, we've seen how uh, the consumer point of view, there's no impact, no change, how they invoke the, and the microservice using their ingress uh, URL. And in the, in, the, in the middle, we put our policies to enforce and then track. Yeah, so in terms of architecture, this is the architecture we, we achieved using uh, AppMesh technology. We we 
hosted our API gateway along with the service mesh control plane and where service mesh will focus on the proxy level or network level enforcements and then we can add the app level or maybe business context to your microservice using API management policies and we dynamically push that uh, as a sidecar deployment. So one important thing is that we are not replacing what service mesh is doing. We are adding more app, more, we're adding more business context to uh, what service mesh is doing today. And that will give the not only the, the flexibility, agility in your microservice east west traffic, it also adds the business context to your microservice architecture. So one big one, another big challenge, another another uh, Another big challenge we also seen that okay, this is may not be only applicable for your Kubernetes environment. Maybe it may be applicable for your non-Kubernetes environment as well. How you can modernize your how, how you can modernize your um, uh, bare metal environments here using uh, using the micro gateway deployment here. So we our micro gateway also supports a simple Java as a simple Java service. You can you can start that in a standalone as in your bare metal uh, Linux environments or maybe any Windows environment, and then you can pull and push the configuration from our central gateway, and then add the secure the your sidecar, you secure the east west traffic as well there. So that's the main agenda for today's demo. And uh, as a as just to recap, the main takeaway from this this center demo is that so yes, uh, microservice we are adapting the microservice today. How to have the more flexibility, agility in our architecture, and uh, of course it has some challenges. We are addressing them through the service mesh implementation today, and service mesh is a great add-on on top of microservice architecture to give the connectivity for east-west traffic, adding the security at the network level. But it has some challenges. We are trying to address those uh, challenges through our app mesh technology to have by adding. To simplifying the entire uh, entire uh, uh, approach, how you can manage the service mesh functionality, along with that, you can add the business context to it. So, with that, uh, let me hand over back to Suri to give quick uh, overview on our uh, WebMethods API management platform. Suri. Yeah, sure. Hey, thanks, uh, Ranul. It was a uh, good demo despite the challenges that we faced. It was uh, it was pretty good, and all of you would have seen how intuitive the platform is, how it can connect to a service mesh, pull the services, and how can you APFI. You know, it was a very powerful platform. Comes with you know very easy to use interface. Okay, so what you see on the screen is uh, is a kind of a pattern. It's kind of an ar a reference architecture. So you have um, you have this concept of multiple domains, right? So you have this domain-driven design. So you have uh, multiple domains. Let's say, for example, for a bank, payment could be a domain, or it could be code ba a code banking application as a domain. And within the domain, you will have all the services, microservices, monolith, uh, monolithic services, you know, all kinds of services. Um, so what you see on the screen is, you know, you have API gateways powering the traffic for all the um, services within a domain. And also across domains, you could use API gateway to route traffic and do the control and everything. So this gives you the flexibility of uh, you know governing your entire ecosystem uh, with or without a service mesh. And you also have the portal to expose your APIs to the outside world. We also have this engage uh, platform to um, basically engage with your external developers. You can run a hackathon, you can run some programs around APIs and uh, have a good interaction. So yeah, so this is our complete platform with governance uh, on design time, runtime with portal and everything. The next slide, uh, Renan. 
Yes. Um, so this is the latest ranking. It just uh, got out two weeks ago. We have been ranked as leader of the leaders, not just leader. So we were ranked, ranked leader in the last wave. And this wave, uh, we went even further ahead. And that's because of stronger offering in the current, uh, uh, current space. As well as from a future perspective, we have a stronger strategy in terms of what we have got to offer. So, yeah, so analysts have recognized how powerful our platform is, um, not just Forrester, also uh, Gartner. Uh, next slide, Rana. Right. Um, so you could give us a try. Uh, so we have our platform available on the cloud. And if you want to try our app mesh on the cloud, you could do it if you have all the microservices running on the cloud, on AWS, Azure. If it is on-prem, you could download our trail software, or you could go to Docker store. You could download the Docker image and start uh, using it from day one. We also have a lot of resources on GitHub. Now CI/CD pipelines, we have um, some samples, Postman scripts and everything. Uh, we also have lots of YouTube uh, training sessions. Just give us a try. It's, it's, a, it's a very nice platform, widely recognized, used by lots of customers. So do give us a try and let us know um, how you find it. And just to quickly summarize um, you know, the, the demo and what we did, uh, think about the developer productivity you will gain with this platform, right? So you can just do happy coding. You don't have to bother about logging, security, you know, throttling or routing, routing. You don't have to do or handle these in your code, or you don't have to um, make use of another platform, third-party platform to do all these things. On the same lines, if you need to make a change you know, on your code, you need to consider the impact it will have when something breaks. So with this platform, you can make many changes without even touching your microservice. You can do transformation, data transformation. You can do data masking. You can do content-based routing without changing a line of code in your microservice. Uh, think about a payment service, which uh, you know, depending on the geography of the consumer is routed to different uh, service. So you could do this, achieve this very easily with our platform. You don't have to do any coding. And if something goes wrong in your microservice, imagine the number of hours and days you would spend on debugging the issues. And not to forget the impact it will have on business, right, when something goes wrong. Uh, with a proven platform, the possibilities of things going wrong is much, much lesser. And we have, uh, you know, it's a configuration-based platform, not coding. So with that comes lesser chances of anything going wrong. So you could avoid building a Death Star, you know, like the famous um, space station built in Star Wars. So you could avoid all those things with our platform. Next slide. Thanks uh, everyone for your valuable time with us. Um, so we do have several other sessions. We have two sessions tomorrow. Please do join us. We are sharing some of the API use cases that we have seen in the market. And there is also a panel discussion on things that you need to consider when, when you want to get a platform for API. That's going to be a very interesting session. It is from our product manager. And he is going to share what analysts are talking about. With that, um, we will end the session now. Thanks once again. Please do join us later. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Bye.